but currently James is my least favorite Laughlin as he did not get me the one thing I asked him for yesterday. I said, hey, Coach Laughlin, I'm going to need... I'm going to need a roster for these young ladies. So, Mike, let's head down to one where the ones and twos are going to be taking off here for the West Liberty Comet golf team. As Coach Kayla Morrison gives some final instruction to her young lady golfers here. Once again, beautiful day out here at lovely West Liberty Country Club as we are all set for golf and I for one Mike There we go. Hey, there we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. So I think we unplugged the wire here. We've got a few wires in here, which is really the biggest reason that we need a third person on this crew to run the camera for us. I think that would eliminate a lot of our issues. Mike, you, you agree? I would agree. A lot of stuff in this cart right now. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of technology in here as we are trying frantically to, uh, to gather our locations and our stuff. We're, we're using a, a stationary system and we're making it mobile, which is uh, wonderful and challenging at the same time. So as we come out here to number one tee box, as we drive from the men's tees up down here to the ladies tees where our young lady golfers will be teeing off today. We've got a, a gallery of, looks as if it's parents set to watch us take off on our tee shots here. I'll have you turn, Mike, and I'll have you face towards the golfers. Right there, probably right behind or right next to where the moms are. Pull up there as close as you can get. This is where I really wish I had one more person. If I had somebody that was riding in a cart that could help me with the camera, it would be fantastic. As first up for the comments here, it's a batty beaver. As she sets the tee off. Looks like the Tipton golfer will tee off first here, actually. Just a little bit of wind at their back. They're kind of coming off the left a little bit as well. Here at West Liberty, number one for the ladies is a par five. Hole lays out pretty straight from the women's tees. It is 340 yards up this big hill. As the Tipton driver, nice long swing here. She swings away, hits the ball well, strikes it to the right side as it goes bounding to the top of the hill on the right. Pretty good result there for your first swing, huh, Mike? Absolutely. That'll run the waves. We learned yesterday the conditions out here are a little firm, which kind of surprised me. We've gotten some rain, but uh, the ground is still very firm. The next Tipton golfer takes her practice swing. Very long, very smooth swing. Takes a second one. Checks her alignment with her her club. What's the goal here, Mike? Just get off in a safe shot, or are you trying to set the tempo right now? I think you just put something in play. It's par five, short par five. Don't need to go crazy. She hit that one. I think it went left. It sounded well struck. I didn't see a lot of height to it as Addie Beaver, the number one for West Liberty Comets, will step up to hit here. Addie's a senior this year for the Comets, leader on the team. She takes a nice long practice swing. And I, I saw Addie out here yesterday golfing, getting some practice in while I was out here with my little munchkins and my wife. 
And he hits a nice drive right down the middle. A little bit of cut to it. That's going to land up there past the first tree in the fairway on the right side. And she got a little bit of a right kick. So she'll have a, a good look. A good look to the front of the green. Yeah, I think there's a gap. I think she'll be all right. No, she'll be just fine. Cameron Gilmore now steps up. Cameron is the young freshman. I like to call Cameron the phenom. She's uh, a personal favorite of mine. Close family friend. As Cameron sets up here. She's got a long swing. Cameron makes good contact. She drives that one right down the middle, I think. Did it go left? Came off the left there, so Cameron will grab her clubs and we are off and running, folks. We will uh, start to inch our way up here and we're going to set up on top of the hill, watch these ladies hit their second shots. And then while we're up there, Mike, we'll spin around and we'll watch as the threes and fours tee off behind as you get a look at the young ladies as they go nice and slow. Look at the young ladies as they walk their way up the first fairway here. Cameron off to the left. Everyone else off to the right. We have one ball right here in the middle. So stop right here. Not sure who this is, but there's a ball right there in front of us. To the left. Looks like it might be... Is that a lost ball? Cameron's off on the left side in the rough, so we'll try and pan over there. Cameron pulls, it looks like an iron. It's a hybrid, excuse me. A couple good practice swings there from Gilmore. As she sets. Good contact as she hits that all the way down there to the That's sycamore a, tree. It's a great shot. She'll she be just up there on the right side. All of that ball. So as we work our way up here. I know on a personal level, Cameron is rather nervous about having us follow her around, and I have tried my best to tell her that she just needs to enjoy herself and let her talent shine through here. I imagine this is a lot for all of the girls, having a, a professional broadcast team following them around like you and I, Mike. Mike, of course, helping us out today. He's a local member here and part of our local first responders here. I say we sit right here in the shade for a minute and mm -hmm. just soak up some of the shade. So we check our battery strength as our battery is our biggest nemesis and we are already down to 33%. It might be. Yeah, it's clearly not updating right now. Decent amount of wind off the right here. Downhill. It is saying no service. Which, that worked the whole time last time. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Really frustrating the hell out of me that it's not working. I think the only way to do it is power burger. Well, the only way to do it is to sit in one spot, and that ruins all of the fun because you don't get any views other than where you're going to get where you're sitting. And the whole point of this was to drive around and see all of the views. Yeah. And it's just not going to happen. Saying I have no internet now. Is the hotspot dead? 
Tell me the hot spot's dead. That will make my day. It's AT&T, actually. It said browsing on it, didn't it? Oh, did it? Yeah. No service. 4G. Now it's got service. There we go. Full service is right. It's, what, 4G. But, it's but, 4G, though. That's probably why. Well, that's not helping us any, but now it's saying no. I can't even connect to it. Oh, that's some sort of... It's not even discoverable. There we go. We have internet now. We are struggling mightily here, folks. No. Trying to get this to turn back on as we have we've still not updated our our screen from the front of the number one shot. So we may have audio, we don't have video. And we don't really have anything going right now. So we are in technical difficulties. We've had People trying to tune in, but not having any luck whatsoever. RC400L is up to date. Okay. So then let's let's work here, huh? It says I have 4G full bars. I'm uh, not sure if this is broadcasting or not. According to my computer here, it is not broadcasting currently. As my screen has not updated. I am struggling mightily to get this back inside of the cart as the number threes and fours make their way up the number one hole here I believe Mike can you tell me who this young lady is right here walking this way who's, who's that girl right there Mike Mike do you know who that is you don't know who that is I think that's the We've got audio. The young lady from the transferred in. Someone text Travis if you can hear us if you're watching. As we're watching the putt here, the Tipton golfer. Oh, what great a putt. great putt! About a 15 footer. She just dropped in on the top side there. And the other Tipton golfer now will set up. Cameron's going to have herself a little, uh, about a five-footer. Is this for a par here, I believe? So Cameron's going to look at a par putt here very shortly. As we are not broadcasting, battery saver is on. So I'm out of battery. I have no internet. I say we go to the golf. Let's go up to the country club as soon as cameras and putting here. Can we plug this directly? Let's just there. No, let's just go straight to the country club. Uh, yeah, we could try that. Yeah, let's try that. Plug that directly into there. If what is this then? Well, that's the mixer. We can't take. We can't unplug the mixer. 
the mixer has to have power 24 7 or else it will shut off so that is not pluggable anywhere else so let's just go to the country club let's try to find a drop cord we'll plug in up there and if nothing else we'll just broadcast the number three green before we shut this thing down for the night because we are not going to have any success we have no internet currently we have no broadcast ability currently so we are struggling mightily unfortunately just past these guys we need to get up there before these girls tee off don't go too crazy i got my hands full here oh gosh So what I'll have you do, Mike, is I'll have you set this on the green here to watch the shots coming in. And uh, we will try to set up on the balcony there. At least watch all three groups come through on one. Where do you want it on the green? Uh, just at the back here, just to watch all the shots coming up on. So you'll just have, I'll have you just park real quick, and I'll have you run down here and just set it facing towards the pin so we can get a decent shot at the pin. And uh, I'll, I'll get the camera carried up here and I will carry our stuff up on the balcony as we'll then work on getting a drop cord. And once we get a drop cord, we should be able to set up and hopefully regain some internet. That would be a great start. And if we can get some internet and a start, then by golly, we'll have something. If you could come help me carry all of this stuff, Mike. Just got to grab all of those things at once. Here's the problem. As we're going to need that inverter, too, because it's plugged in there still. We're going to have some serious wind noise as well, now that we're not in the golf cart anymore. Let's go find us a country club chair here and... Maybe I'll walk inside, or you can walk inside, and let's sit right. Let's sit right here on the, on the balcony. So we're gonna try and watch as the girls hit in. That would be helpful if you could get one. Thank you, sir. As we are at this point, it's a failure. Unfortunately, folks, we cannot get internet service. We cannot get consistent internet service. We're not having any success whatsoever. As it looks as if the West Liberty golfers have already teed off now. Mike, we are. I think we're. I think we're off. I'm not certain that we're off, but I think we're off. Well, when you were, when I was inside, I could hear. We are definitely not getting the service that we're supposed to be getting with this, as we still don't have the camera. And I think we're. I think our camera is zoomed too high. I think we need to have it closer up here and zoom more down here. I'll let you. You sit here and try and talk.
No, it's trying. I would say we're suffering one large loss here. There we go. As this is not working still. I have no video still. I've got video on my phone here. Do you? We're good to go. Is that a picture of the actual golf course now? Because I'm still locked in the lock screen here. Okay, so, all right, well, we're here on three. We've lost power, we've lost internet, we've lost pretty much everything. So we're going to give it a shot here. The Tipton golfer chipping from down below. Ball gets a little past here, goes over the back, and is on the hillside. Now we've got, looks like Cameron Gilmore going next. She's high side here, behind the green, hitting her second, maybe third shot. And she dribbles it down the hill. Oh, what a very soft and... Safe shot that was. Cameron rolls out to about 25 feet. She's on the putting surface, so she'll have a look at par here probably. Very smart play, though. Yeah, smart to keep it down low there. Now, I believe this is Addie Beaver. If it's not Addie, I severely apologize. But I think that's who this young lady is. She sets up to chip. Gets the chip. It bounces. It rolls. Rolls down the hill. Oh, got a little, p little pace there at the bottom but rolls out to about pin depth. She's going to have a nice looking 15 footer up the hill. Pretty straight putt. It might break a little bit left or right on her. Great shot there. About two feet from the hole. Up next is going to be Tipton Golfer as she's going to set up here. She marks it right nice and close. Now the last Tipton golfer from the hillside. Awkward stance. This is rough. She gives it a little go. Skips onto the green. Rolls out. It actually stops. I thought that ball would roll further. She leaves herself about 12 foot. And her ball will move left to right. Cameron Gilmore now set up. She's every bit of 25 feet away. Got a good look here, though. As Cameron will set, she'll eye the ball. Gets her aim line ready. Surveys the putt. She gives it a hit. It's going to be right on line. She leaves it about five feet short, hitting into the wind. The wind, I think maybe the wind affected that a little bit, Mike. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit more uphill. Uh, looking at it from back here, you can really tell, but it's hard to read that from the green. Look of exacerbation on her dad's face as he wanders off this way. Mike and I were talking yesterday. Cameron came out and played with her dad over the weekend and shot a 43. That's a so good score. That young lady is capable of some really good scores as there's some conversation now about how she's marking her ball, about whether it's going to be in the way. So I don't know what that discussion was, but... Tipton golfer and Cameron. Now the West Liberty golfer. Nice and easy here. This ball should be pretty straight. Maybe a little bit of left or right in it. She hits a good firm whack. Just she goes past the hole. She got a little aggressive with that line. Still got a good look at it here. Going to be coming back. As we've also got, looks like the fives and sixes are now chipping on number nine. So we will have the opportunity to see them go tee off on one from up here. Well, we won't see it, but. You know, Mike, we could. Uh... I don't have the charger. I'm not going to worry about it. So we could plug in that power pack and try to go back out again after this, but I'm honestly frustrated enough with the internet loss we've had that I'm just going to sit here and take this as a win, and we're going to call this good enough for today. How's our power pack performing over there? Still at 12 volts? I think so. 
hit that battery button right there, it'll tell you. 11.5. So plenty of power left in it. Cameron Gilmore now has this left. It's probably about 8 feet. And this could move left to right a touch. Gives it a good poke. Oh, and it does scoot past the right side of the hole, so she will walk over Mark. side of the hole and a little bit of frustration there for Addy. her putt. She's got about four foot left. Golfer taps in her two-footer. And just now Gilmore left to tap in here. <coughs> she surveys her putt here. And she'll tap it in. So the Comets and the Tigers will finish three holes here as we will step away for just a second to get an update on the score. As we... Uh, Apologize, folks. We have had nothing but trouble today. We just nothing has worked. We were we thought we were ready to go, and we're learning as we go here, and just having tef technical difficulty after technical difficulty between battery life and inverters working, and golf carts not wanting to charge batteries, and we just have then we had no Wi-Fi, so we've had a, we've had a rough go today. We uh, try to persevere. I'm still at 24%. And I'm plugged into the wall now, so this, this computer just absolutely eats batteries. So <laughs> I appreciate it, Jen. I'm just frustrated it's not working. Gonna be stuck right here for every chance because we have no ability to move without the batteries dying so and then we got out there and we were actually having some success on the first hole and then the, the Wi-Fi died on our third shot so we had no Wi-Fi so we missed three great tee shots on two so yeah well I'm gonna let it we'll let it stay alive we'll just we're, we're waiting for the uh, next set of golfers is they're putting on two I can see from here. I'm going to need to invest in some serious binoculars if I'm going to be able to if I'm going to have to broadcast from one location as I uh, can't see through the trees but there's appears to be a couple tipped in golfers and on the green and I believe the West Liberty golfer is just off the side of the green over there on two. Again that's about 250 yards away from where we're, we're located now. The bright side is it's a beautiful day out here, Mike, and we're on the patio at beautiful West Liberty Country Club. Should have brought some sunscreen. Yeah, we're going to get warm. Well, the manager, Jen, just came out and offered us uh, an umbrella. Should we take her up on that? Oh, let her burn. We could throw the umbrella up real quick. It, I mean, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I need to have a little bit of shade. Yeah, your head's pretty shiny. My, you tell me about it. That's what children and stress will do to you. You're learning that, my friend. You're learning it. 
Well, we have binoculars. Once again, folks, Jen Kivy coming up clutch. I tell you, you need something, you come out to the West Liberty Golf and Country Club. They will take care of you. Now, if I could just put this on the front of the camera so we could see something on the camera. Unfortunately, I cannot see how is Ortiz, and I do not recall the name of the other young lady from West Liberty. You know what? While we're sitting here, I'm going to walk inside and see if James did the roster that I asked him to do. And he wrote it on a piece of paper. He told me he did, but he didn't give me the piece of paper. So if he did it, I don't have it. So I'm going to walk in there real quick. I'll be right back. You uh, keep me updated. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. We're trying, ladies. It's not working, but we're trying. We're trying to broadcast your golf meet. Yeah, I need on-field reporters. <laughs> you go make birdie first.
still live? I can't tell. Are you talking into the screen? Because if you don't talk into the screen, you can't hear. You won't know if you're live. Because there's nothing happening on video. Oh, we're live, yeah. Because the girls are just now teeing off. I did get the names. So it's Kaylee Pelzer and Grace Ortiz are our three and four. I'm going to grab a scorecard real quick. Perfect. We can talk about scorecards. stuck in one location we have to at least find some things to talk about so we're right. going to discuss the country club we're going to discuss the uh the layout of the course here encourage anybody out there in listener land to come on out and check out west Liberty country club in your spare time um the ladies teed off today we're on live on number three here at west liberty country club and number three from the women's tees is 135 yards it's straight over water straight up hill with a little backstop and a little hill on the left Looks like Ortiz might be in the water. One Tipton golfer went in the water and one West Liberty in the water. Yeah, that's Grace That's Grace Ortiz. I believe she's a senior, if I saw the wall right. So she'll be taking her drop right there. So she'll be hitting three from right there. About 70 yards away, straight uphill. She takes a practice swing here. Grace makes good contact is the ball oh she got too much of it as it flies just over the back right of the green and she'll have a little bit of an upslope here with a decent lie as Kaylee Pelzer West Liberty's other golfer Kaylee Pelzer is golfing today in the three hole for the West Liberty comments and it is Addie Beaver is the one that is who I was calling Addie Beaver earlier so I get a little reprieve on that, Mike. I'll take my wins when I get them. They're few and far between at this day, but as the Tipton golfer takes her third shot from down there, and I did not see the result. Oh, there it is. Put it on, on the left it. side of the green. Got a about 40-footer away, but she's on the green. Pelzer now from down between the trees off to the right. Gets a little bumpy. And I think she's taking a practice swing here. She hits that one, chips it up there. Oh, and it gets just short. It gets caught in the thick stuff on the edge there. We're going to blame that on the greenskeeper, Brent Parizic. He needs to sharpen his blades. These roughs are a little thick over here, Mike. That's kind of a tricky chip from there. Oh, it's a very tough shot from down there. And in all honesty, we'll poke fun at Brent, but Brent does an absolutely fantastic job at this golf course for being a nine-hole course, being a small town like we are here, our greenskeeper is top-notch. Did you know, Mike, that about two years ago, West Liberty Golf Course won an award from the from the USGA Small Golf Course uh, Greenskeeper of the Year, I believe was the title of the award. It was some fancy term. Long story short, Brent's amazing. We're blessed to have him, and he does a fantastic job keeping our course in shape. Now Grace sitting here from behind the green. She's got an awkward stance on her chip here. We'll see what she can do with it. Gets it up there, rolls up. Oh, nicely Great. done. Great control, great speed. And she rolls that to about six feet from the stick. Well done there by the young lady. As she'll have that left for a five, I believe. That would be a pretty gosh darn good score right there. She's got about eight feet left. And that ball is slightly downhill, maybe breaks to the right. There's a ridge there. <laughs> Pelzer now set to chip. A little bump and run. She bumps up there to the left. Good control on the speed again. She puts herself in nice shape there. Now the Tipton golfer, which is either Kennedy Christ or Gwen Vanskoy. She waits for Pelzer to mark her ball. Pelzer marks her ball safely here now. The Tipton golfer will take a practice swing. She chips it up there. It's going to be, oh, just on top of the ridge. Sit down, stay. Mark that quick, young lady. Mark that quick. As it is going to sit right there. It is right on the top of the ridge. Mike, I've been there. 
I have as well. You know where that goes when I go there? Down back to the cart path. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Looks like the other Tipton golfer. So, again, it's either Kennedy or Gwen. Um, unfortunately, I'm unaware of which young lady is which young lady. Uh, the two, the one and two for Tipton is Pacey Sorgenfry and Sydney Stutzel. Um, if I had to guess the Sorgenfry name I've heard, that was probably the taller young lady from the first group. So one Tipton golfer here. She will defer to the other. So the one who's on the ridge, we're going to call her Gwen. She looks like a Gwen. It's a good run at it. Oh, just off the left edge, and it rolls about 18 inches past, so excellent speed from that young lady. And I hope that the video is showing these putts because that one was excellent. Are you seeing, is it close enough, Mike, that we can see the action here? That's tough saying. As much as I absolutely hate being stuck in one location like this, uh, hats off to West Liberty Country Club for giving us such a good place to sit. And, of course, having drop cords for us at a moment's notice and allowing us to set up like this. Oh, big putt there by Pelzer as she drills that one. That's going to be a bogey, I think. It's a solid four. Now Grace Ortiz has this left for, I believe it's a five. About eight feet. Gives it a roll. Oh, All right, beautifully five. rolls it in there like it. No problem. I'll take that five all day after going yeah. in the water off the tee. I tell you what, I put up a lot bigger numbers than five on this hole more often than not. So putting one in the drink and making making double is not a bad thing. That's par with the penalty strokes is what that is. All right. The young lady from Tipton now finishes up her shot. And now we are off on, on three. So these young ladies have finished four holes now. As they will make their way to the number four tee box. I am not comfortable enough to take the, the camera over on the four tee box. Um, Coach Laughlin requested that I not add any extra pressure to the young ladies. Number four, and I, and I of all people, Mike, you can attest to this for me. Number four is my nemesis. Might as well. I think I've donated quite a few balls to Kent Wheelie. Yeah, Kent Wheelie, Wheelie Chevrolet. Could, uh, if he starts selling golf balls, <laughs> he could probably buy another car dealership with the number I've donated to his backyard. Kent will buy some back for him, man. He will. He will. He's a, a very, very charitable gentleman. As Coach Morrison is high fiving her young ladies as they make their way up to number four. We can look and watch from here, but I don't want to move the camera over there. But we're also we're far enough away that I can't see over there. So this is just not it's not my idea of an ideal location. You know? I agree. Especially right now. Because right now we're sitting here and there's not much else we can do. We can talk about hole two, which the fives and sixes, well, they're not they're still on hole one. Be so nice. it's going to be a half an hour before they get over here to three. It would be nice if we could get a drop cord to go in between nine green and, and uh, three green. Set up a table over there. Yeah, it would be nice. would also be nice if we had good Wi-Fi that we could drive out on the golf course like we were. Because mm -hmm. that, was, that was ideal when we were able to do that for that short time. I tell you what, we're plugged in right now, and we are not charging this, this computer. This thing is using the battery. Is it 17 percent? Yeah, I can't even go. see the screen. It's gone so dark down here. I can't see the mouse. I imagine it's a battery saver. It is. Yeah, we're at 39 percent battery. It's going. Not very good. I'd like to turn a battery saver off so I can actually see the screen since we're plugged in. Power and sleep sensing. I'm going to give up on that. As the West Liberty golfers, we've got a couple JV golfers walking down to number one to tee off there, it looks like. 
So while we're here, Mike, let's uh, let's discuss the golf course a little bit. We'll get we'll dig into some details here and let the folks at home know what these young ladies are up against. As the girls we just watched finish up on number three, so Ortiz and Helzer will be teeing off on number four, which is 315 yards for the young ladies, and it is a straight hole with a large valley and a low spot with out-of-bounds right the entire length of the hole. Quite a treacherous and intimidating tee shot, if I might add, or it is to me. I think the smart play is just play an iron down to that, that bottom there and hit a wedge up. You know, I tell you what, I, I've improved my golf scores tremendously by trying that tactic, and then I started, as soon as I start getting excited and cocky about it, I immediately proceed to pump a ball or three out of bounds, so. It's easy to do on that hole. It is definitely not hard to uh, miss right out of bounds. And after four, our, our leaders are, our ones and twos are probably on five or maybe even six at this point. As I see, I see if on five, I see some a golf cart or two, and some young ladies walking up the hill on five, which is about 500 yards away from where we're sitting currently. Mm -hmm. So way off in the distance, I can see some ladies walking up the tee there, and there's there's the gallery following them. So we do have quite a few parents out here today watching, which is great to see. Mike Gilmore getting a little walk in. Oh, Mike's always good to get a walk in. I think he's uh, a little more nervous about watching Cameron play golf than Cameron is and I I can't help but snicker and giggle because he's such a mild mannered man and Cameron is about as polite and sweet as they come and it's fun to watch him play <clears throat> as we are gat we are joined here in studio by the one the only Avery Hans why, hello, little missy. Oh, you got a tea? Can I have it? Thank you. Hey, do you want it back? Okay. <laughs> As we uh, stand here, stand by waiting, stuck to our stuck to our chairs as we're not allowed to move around without internet and power. I've got to find a way, Mike, to create an environment where I can have this portable enough to where I can drive around with sound internet and a surplus of power. And until I can do that, it's going to be frustrating for me. We'll find a way. Well, I've got the will. It's just a matter of finding the way. So... As I look up here, I see the ladies are finishing up on number one. So that means that we're going to get Izzy Gama and Shelby Claybo, both from Tipton, along with Maggie Mahoney and Sophie Bicey, who are the five and six for the West Liberty Comets. They'll be working their way down two. And on two is a, a tricky little par two. It's downhill, 135 yards for the ladies today. And one of the tougher shots about two is... The, the green has an optical illusion to it, Mike. Fair to say? I think that's pretty fair. Right down the middle, there's a valley. There is. There's a ridge there. And then if you go too far on it, it it's got a hill where it, it looks as if it comes back into the hillside. But the entire hole, minus the end where the runway is, all rolls back towards the water. Mm -hmm. So from a side profile view, it is an incredibly tricky green to read. One that, I well, I still struggle to read, but uh, can definitely cause some issues for the, the young golfers. Short is definitely the safe play. You don't want to be long on two. Yeah, there's a no man's land behind the green on number two with the steep slope and the treacherous facial or face area there. That's It's really hard to keep it mowed tight. Brent does such a nice job keeping things downed out there, although it's just such a hard lie from back there. As the West Liberty golfers are coming down nine, we've got one West Liberty golfer has come. She's playing the hole off to the right here, which she's over far enough that she should have a look at the nine green from over by the cart path, one of our JV golfers. As we're going to take aim here, you can maybe see her in the distance. Oh, big swing, good contact. And she puts one right back in play, and she's going to have a good look at the front of the green right there. 
So good aggressive play there from that young lady. So wind really picking up. The wind is heavy today. Would it be nice to be sitting in a cart with doors, but alas, we're on the deck. Speaking of on the deck, overlooking the deck is the number three green. Number three is 130 yards straight uphill over water. One of the most intimidating holes on West Liberty Country Club. You really have to favor your shot to the left side of the green because anything to the right falls off and rolls deep down a hole where you will not be able to see the hole from your stance. Yeah, how far do you think it is over the water for these girls today? Um, I'm going to guess to carry the water, you're probably looking at about 95 to 100 yards. Um, of course, it depends upon angle. If you're going at the green, it's more like 100 and probably 100. If you're going off to the left, kind of the runway fairway area, you're looking more like, uh, you know, 70. Mm -hmm. Either way, you got wind helping a little bit today. But uh, it's, I will tell you, it is a feat to clear that water. And you don't want to go right. No, Left right, is right, is, right is no good at all. On, on most holes on West Liberty Country Club, yeah. right causes a lot of trouble for you on most of our holes. And then, of course, we talked about number four. Number five this year is the slight dogleg right. One of the longer holes on the course. Number five is 372 yards from the white tees. It's 367 for the ladies' tees. So a heck of a long shot. It's actually a par 5, Mike, for the women. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yes, par for the women is 37 at West Liberty Golf and Country Club. And it's par, it is that because of that 367-yard par 5, or par 5, number 5. It is kind of a new-looking hole this year with a lot of those trees gone on the right side. Yes, of course, the ash borer came through here and absolutely decimated West Liberty Country Club. That along with uh, derecho winds on at least one occasion, maybe two. And uh, yeah, the right side of number five is it went from being a dog leg that you could not miss to the right to now it, it's in the process of becoming a nomo. Um, once again, Brent Prezik working his hardest to try to find a way to make it to keep the integrity of the hole, make sure that we keep our, our 68 slope rating here, and, or excuse me, our 69.3 slope rating. Um, it's going to be hard to do though with with that being such a straight runway there. Mm -hmm. Really going to have he's working on a no mo, but we've got to find a way to keep people from driving through the no mo is the issue right now. Putting ropes up, I think that's the only way we can do yeah, it. Yeah, ropes are going to have to come up at some point, but we've got to get some good growth there still. We don't mm -hmm. have enough growth yet, so once we get. Later on in the spring here, we'll see how things turn out. We'll see. And he's got, with, with Brent, you never know. He may have new obstacles there. He could he could come up one day and just put out 12 little bush trees right in the middle of that thing. And, well, he could really ruin some people's day with that. So just have Brent out there hide behind a tree with a paintball gun. Yeah, that works too. I mean, I'm, a, I'm not against a little bit of corporal punishment with some paintballs for the golfers that hit astray. Lord knows he'd be paintballing me rather regularly. Once you get done with that treacherous number five, though, that's a little less treacherous this year, you, then you get the beautiful hole number six, which is probably my favorite hole in this course because why? It's the one hole on this course that if I get a little bit of wind, I can drive that sucker. It's going to be a little harder today with the wind in their face. Yeah, the wind a is a little bit longer. Wind is definitely right in the teeth of that 300 and or 290 yard shot for the ladies, so that's going to make it play a little longer than usual, but. Again, it's a nice hole. It's got a nice large green. It does have the two levels on the green, which every time he puts the pin in the lower half of the green, I wind up on top. And every time he has this, the pin in the back upper tier, guess where my ball is? On the front. Or off the back. Or, up the or back. off the back. So fun little green out there, number six. Number seven here at West Liberty is, of course, the infamous dog leg. And when I say dog leg, I mean 90 degrees to the right, folks. This is the only hole in golf that benefits a true slicer of the ball. Which I am rather good at. Yeah, that is your forte. 485 yards for the girls today. That's a long yeah, that, hole. That's a long hole for those young ladies. And honestly, for the women, it's, it's really tough because they're closer to the trees, so they don't have as much time to get the height to try to cut any corner. 
So they almost have to play it straight up, mm -hmm. which makes it a 200-yard drive straight out and then 400 yards straight down the hill. So number seven is a pretty demanding hole for the golfers. Do they have the uh, tee box at the at the turn for them? No, they do not walk. That's only for special events, okay. and and that's actually a pink tee box on the we call it the corner, where occasionally they'll put the tee box on the corner. When they put it on the corner, it makes it about a 400 yard drive. So when you're right there at that corner, you're about 400 yards. It's a long par four realistically, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean it is technically a par five. Then number eight, which is also one of my favorite holes, it's a straight up 295 yards, straight up the hill, and then there's a big valley. So you have to clear the valley. Uh, getting down there in that downslope is absolutely nightmarish. Hmm? The cart's parked right over there by the cart shed. It's parked over by my cart shed, Jordan, if you know where that is. It's sitting next to those two blue trash cans. There's my pickup over there next to it. If you'd like to, Jordan, you're welcome to take that golf cart right there. That one's got doors and windows. You can just walk. Just take this path over there. Can I go back there real quick? No. Just, uh, yeah, you can just go get the cart. And the West Liberty Junior Varsity Golfers are on nine now as they're putting their way around. As we are going to sit here and we're going to wait until our our five and six golfers get through three. And I think we might call it a day after that because we still don't have enough battery to go, go remote again. So I don't think going remote is going to be an option for us. And honestly, I, I'm thinking about just having... Having them put me in one location, going to put me out on six. I'll just sit at Mike Gilmore's house up on the balcony. Where at least I'm elevated so I can see to a tee box and a green. It's a great view from there, too. It is a great view from up there. Plus, I have a high enough spot where hopefully the Wi-Fi will shoot all the way to both cameras. And put one camera behind number six for tee shots and one camera on number five for the green putting. So His Wi-Fi might even reach us from here. I tell you what, and I actually told that to the the school. I said, you know, if anybody at the country club is going to have Wi-Fi that could reach out and touch somebody, it would be Mike Gilmore. <laughs> Absolutely, it would be. That, that man can he can solve some problems. So he's the guy that I call when I have some IT issues. As the ladies make their way past number nine here, they'll head over to one to tee off and continue their round. Beautiful day again to get some get some links in and get some holes under your belt. Work on some stuff on the course here. <sighs> on the bright side, my wife will be happy I come home early. <laughs> it's always a good thing. You know, I just thought of something. I can solve the the power problem. Al Mather and XN Mather have loaned me a generator, which I was trying not to use because the power bank had been working. But I only have one of those. And I thought we had a second one of those coming today, and I didn't get one. So if I only have one of those, I need two good sources of power. So if I have to run a generator the whole time in the back of the golf cart, then now I'm going to have to run a generator the whole time in the back of the golf cart. It'll be a steady noise, but at least it'll be a solid noise that I know I'll have power. So I am dedicated, and I am I, I still think this works the best mobile because this right here is not successful. Yeah, I agree. I think we're missing a little, a lot of uh, attention missing, to a lot of golf. We're missing here. all of the action of the golf right now. We're just sitting here talking about golf with no one around and nothing to broadcast. And, and even in a tournament setting, right now is when we're going to see the teams that we don't know the kids and it's not the West Liberty kids that we want to follow.
and we want to, to highlight and I just am not, I'm not happy with this idea of just sitting in one place and I don't think I'm interested in doing this if this is what we're going to do. Are you saying you like talking, Travis? I do like to talk, but I don't want to sit here and talk without something to talk about. <laughs> I need a topic, Mike. I need, I need action. I need activity. It just isn't, this is not what I had envisioned, so. We'll get it figured out. Yeah, we're going to continue to try to problem solve and figure out what's going on, but this is definitely not a solution. So if we can't find a way to make this thing mobile, then we're going to have to wait till the technology gets better or we find a different option because this is not a solution. I'm not interested in sitting in one spot and trying to broadcast a mobile game from a location. Looks like the girls on two have teed off. They're making their way up to the green. And again, that's going to be the five and the six from each side. So they will be playing three next. And once they finish three, I think I'm going to close the close up shop, and mm -hmm. we're going to call this again, call this a day, because it's uh, it's quarter after five. I've been here for an hour and a half, and we've got about ten minutes of actual golf we've been able to see, because that's just how it works when you're in one location. Just I'm frustrated. I don't know what else to say other than that. So, uh, I stand corrected. Addie Beaver is a junior, not a senior. And Grace Ortiz is also a junior, not a senior. So, I mispronounced both of those ladies' years in academics. Uh, something else I did want to mention while we were sitting here, though. We would be remiss not to talk about the men's starting lineup tonight. As both... Hale and Cole Doffelt are MIA. Hmm. They are in Des Moines this week at the FFA Trials Convention. It's a showcase. It's some sort of competition, and they are pivotal members of the FFA department, which West Liberty has a fantastic FFA department. Would it be remiss not to mention Zach Morris and all of his efforts, as well as all of the community who stands behind and works with and for the West Liberty Athletic Program and Academic Program to, to make such an excellent excellent program here for West Liberty. Number one ranked FFA department in the state. That's Mike. impressive. It is impressive. So with the, the Dawfelt Twins out of the lineup for West Liberty, for the boys who are playing in Tipton tonight, you've got... Sophomore Perry Lehman is the one, which he's the typically number the one. Then you've got Morgan Lehman playing with him. Then you've got Johnny Doffelt and Caden Laughlin penciled into the three and four slot. And then you've got young Ryan Laughlin and Cody Sealer. So a freshman and a sophomore filling in for the juniors, Doffelt boys. So good golfers in that group. Absolutely. Well, wishing the the gentle, the young men all the luck in the world tonight as they are in Tipton. While I have another moment here, I want to pull up the West Liberty Golf and Country Club calendar and talk about some events coming up for the West Liberty Country Club as we're out here, so we may as well give them some plugs, right? Looking at the calendar here for April, uh, I believe Wednesday night is the Men's League Draft. That's always a good time. It is an excellent time. I'm hopeful that I'll get to be there for the draft and be a part of the draft. It will just depend upon my wife's haircut appointment. <laughs> Priorities. Come on, happy, Emily. Happy wife, happy life, Mike. You'll learn this. <laughs> I haven't yet. <laughs> exactly. As the rest of this week, the men's league draft is the 17th. And then, of course, the country club is known for its daily lunch specials. Uh, looking at some tournaments coming up here, the 21st, um, oh, that's a drink special. That's not a tournament. Can't talk about that on a high school thing. Um, it looks like there are no more tournaments. Oh, 9 a.m., there's an over 60 tournament. But men's league starts on the 24th. Mike, are you excited for men's league to start on the 24th? I am very excited for men's league. I, too, am excited for men's league to start on the 24th. Great networking. 
Absolutely, an excellent networking opportunity here in West Liberty, and it really allows you to become part of the community. So, um, I also I would be remiss not to mention that next week the boys have a home meet versus Durant on Monday. We will not be broadcasting that um, at all because I'm not going to sit like this again. So if we can't get this thing solved. Um, we will be done broadcasting golf this year. We've got to find a solution that can get us mobile because this just doesn't work sitting here. I will be broadcasting the 23rd at noon, which is the West Liberty High School Boys Home Tournament. Now, my understanding is there's 10 or 11 teams sending six golfers each, Mike. So there will be between 60 and 66 golfers on the course that day. Should be a pretty full house. Of course, I would love to be mobile again because I want to follow the West Liberty kids and showcase their golf game. Um, I may sit in one location for that, but I will not be broadcasting any more home dual meets until we get some sort of solution that I can be mobile. 60 golfers should fill up this course pretty nicely with uh, continuous play all day. Well, with with ten, ten teams of sixsomes, you're going to have foursomes on every hole, and you're going to have foursomes. You'll have a couple extra foursomes on. Actually, you'll have you'll almost have two foursomes on every hole. So, should be a pretty good setup for them. Looks like Sophie Bicey is making her way to the tee box here on number three as we are getting ready to come with some action here. We're finally back to action, folks. As the West Liberty number five and six, Sophie Bicey and Maggie Mahoney are facing off with Izzy Gama and Shelby Claybo. And unfortunately, we're, we're far enough away that I do not know whom is who. I don't know that I'll know them, the difference in them for, through the goggle or through the binoculars here, but we'll give it a shot. And I've met Sophie twice. She was a heck of a good interview at football a couple years ago here. I think Sophie is the one yeah, on the left there. And I'm pretty sure Maggie is the one in the back. The Tipton girls, I do not know. But as they prepare to tee off here, they're all kind of looking around like, Hey, Coach, what should we do here? As we've got a participant watching there. Wind howling off of the right. It really is. Is the wind helping here now? It's almost like it's shifted a little bit, Mike. It might be helping a tiny bit, but it's really going to push that ball. I think Not hitting the center of the green is all you'd want here. No, I, no sense in getting aggressive with it. Yeah, the center of the green is a is an inviting place. I still am a fan of playing this hole off to the right. Mm-hmm. And letting the hill do the work for you. It looks like Off to the golfer's left. Yes. Our right. Our right, yes. Yeah. It looks like Mahoney is gonna hit first. And again, I'm saying Mahoney. I, that could be Sophie. I am not familiar enough with these young ladies to know for certain who is who. Takes a mighty practice swing. Oh, mighty practice swing there with the driver. As she's got ready for one more practice swing here. Big cut. She's looking. She's aiming a little bit to her left, which is a smart move. She hits it, and that's going to be. Oh, great shot. Yeah, all Come the off way. Off that hill. Off the hill, rolling up. She's about a foot from the green. She's in the fringe right there. That's an excellent drive. Absolutely. Using that hill that you were talking about to come off of. I believe that was Mahoney, and that was that was an excellent that might be the best shot we've seen today. I believe this is Bicey. A mighty practice swing. As she sets behind the ball now. Hits it, and oh, she got a little bit on top of it, and she does hit it in the water. So she'll have to take a drop on the other side there. 
I do like that the uh, the rules today are not line of flight in. There is a designated drop zone for any ball hit in the water, which is uh, it, it's a nice rule, Mike. It uh, hitting in the water is a penalty enough. You don't need to penalize it and have to hit over the water a second time. Yeah, number three is a hard hole. It really is. It's very intimidating, especially for these young ladies. Don't have a ton of years of experience golfing yet, and even an old crusty fellow like me who's been playing golf for quite a while, still not good enough to be comfortable on this shot. So the first Tipton golfer with a long, long backswing here. She rips it to the left side. She just clears it, and she is... I saw it land. I didn't see that one. I I thought she was on the green. She either rolled up on the back of the green or she or I saw it skip right there at the very edge of the of the grass and come over. It sounded like good contact. I'm I'm impressed with some of these golfers uh, club head speed. They've got some hard uh, hard swings. Definitely getting some some whip on the ball. Mhm. Mm Mighty hack there. I did not see that ball. So I do not know where the fourth Tipton golfer went as she leaves the tee box and the ladies will start making their way up the hill here. Would love to know what our screen looks like now is hopefully soon, folks, you're going to have something to watch on the screen here as the, as the golfers approach our camera location. <laughs> So Sophie will be dropping on just this side of the water, and I, I believe I know the one what the one Tipton girl made it clean over. I do not know about the location of the second Tipton golfer. We will have to wait and see. So Sophie will approach the drop zone here, and we'll see what she can do. Once again, going to be about 70 yards straight up the hill here, as all of the ladies will wait. She wastes no time getting behind it. I think the safe play is just get knock it right into the center of the green if you can. Yeah, again, I, I from down there, that angle she's at, you want to miss to the her left mm -hmm. to have that hillside help protect you. And just hope you don't get hung up on it as she hits the ball up. She didn't like it. I didn't see where it went. And there is a Tipton golfer also dropping to hit from down there, so she must have gone in the water as well. And the second Tipton golfer now taking dead aim. She's aimed right at the stick aggressive line and she hits the ball and it bounces down the cart path third hit four cart pass a rock oh my gosh I think it might have fell in the water I think it did as well <sighs> she pushed the ball just a touch and boy I feel for that young lady as that ball skipped on the cart path three times Mike three or four yeah straight off the toe of the club then it caught that it caught that piece of riprap down there by the pond. It kicked straight up in the air and into the water. And I can tell you from experience, that's about as dejecting of a shot as you can have. And the second Tipton golfer who did clear the water, but just barely down there, she got hung up on the cart path area. She kicks one up the hill pretty solidly. So she'll have a chip at a putt here. And I think that's... I'm still really impressed with the shot that we saw there from... Mahoney as off to the left the right of your screen here folks is Sophie she's taking a little pitch shot from up the top of the hill very tough shot it is a very tough to control the speed you almost want to have this ball land in the rough and just tumble down the hill just and that's like what she did, did. what great a great shot. shot as that ball feeds out to the middle of the green and she'll have herself a nice little 25 footer there 
Tipton golfer. Getting some help here. Asking about the location of the tee or the pin. It's good sportsmanship. Absolutely. Well, we 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 are known for our polite, respectful young women here in West Liberty. As the Tipton golfer does get it up on the green, she's going to be just on the front edge. The second Tipton golfer is trying to retrieve her ball out of the water here. And I don't know if she got it. Looks like she got it. Well, that's she's good. She's going to take a drop down there. So she'll be dropping. That's a pretty tough spot to drop from down there. Really tight angle down there. Got all those trees right there in her way. And the cart path to contend with. Plus, oh. that's a pretty steep hill, Mike. Yeah, and I don't think you can get it over those trees. I think you really got to play something underneath them. A punchy shot or a driving it into the hillside and letting it pop up. Mahoney's still waiting on her birdie putt here as she has decided that she's going to go ahead and take her, her birdie putt from just off the green. She's reading her line. Gives it a hearty whack. Just Not looks like enough. a good line. She just didn't quite have enough gas in it. As it'll be about, we'll call it 12 foot. She got over two thirds of the way there. Again, they're they're hitting straight into the teeth of the wind. And you have that uh, that front that just feeds right down to the water, so that scares you. You don't want to go long. Absolutely. So it's that gets it's in your smart head. to play a little safe there. Absolutely. Sophie Bicey with a nice putt. Her speed is excellent as she leaves it about two feet short. She'll mark that right there, and she should be in good shape here. Thank you. As uh, she's going to have about three feet left. Oh, Sophie just about hit by the golf ball. Struck by the Tipton golfer. Sophie wasn't ready for that as the Tipton golfer does play to the middle of the green. And Tipton's now putting their way up. The first, first young lady on the green is putted to the middle. She's about 10 feet out now. We'll call it 15 feet out. She's going to have a pretty straight putt here. Uh, looks like we're going to go with Mahoney in first in instead. Mahoney, only about 12 feet to go. This is for par. Oh, she just missed it to the left. That's a very Excellent good putt, though. Pace. Excellent pace. I think that ball actually moves right to left there. It doesn't look like it should, but it does. So excellent job by Mahoney. She'll tap in for an easy four, and an excellent an excellent drive leads to a good score. Tipton golfer goes for it. She leaves it just about a foot out right and hits it just a touch too far, maybe five feet past. That's the second Tipton golfer. Hits one pretty good pace. She gets herself to about two and a half feet away now. As Sophie Bicey will set up her two-footer. As she sets it up, the Tipton golfer is going to try to complete here. She puts it just oh, oh just a little short. Three rotations short of perfect. She'll finish up. Now it's Sophie. Or not Sophie, as the other Tipton golfer will now putt. She'll finish up. And now Sophie has a chance to finish up. Oh, oh it looks Sophie out. Sophie pulled it just a touch left. She'll take her time here. Reset it. Go through the motions. Make sure you're getting your line. Tough result, but... Good determination by the young lady. Reset there. Don't just go whack it. Set back up. Go through the motions. Get your routine. And she'll complete the putt there. So she'll finish up and move on to number four tee box here. We're gonna. I'm gonna stand up and try to see the four tee box. Uh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do, Mike? I want you to watch that. I'm gonna walk and see how far I can get the camera over there. And you let me know. Yeah. It's going to be about 20-second delay. Mm -hmm. But let me know how close I can get. Sounds before good. Before I lose signal. Here, Jen, would you hop on the mic and talk to Mike while I <laughs> go? Just real quick. Just let people out there in listener land know that the Country Club is always open. and oh, Anyone's welcome to come out and enjoy their 
enjoy a round of West Liberty Country Club. Travis 13 off. Next group of golfers teeing off on three here. First golfer, I believe, from West Liberty. Put it a little bit right and safe. Just have a little bit of an uphill chip. Second West Liberty puts one in the water. She'll have to drop from the drop zone. So we're going to try to go mobile again here. Follow that group you just saw. Finish up on three. Sounds like Jack Mahoney is going to be helpful here. All right, Travis, can you get the generator there? Yeah, we got to plug every, we got to plug the mixer back into that. Okay. The so the mixer is this one here, which is. It goes in right there. You gotta turn this on like that. So you gotta unplug that one right there. This one? Yep. Volume right now. There we go. Now we're back. So we should have volume now. There, we, there go. we go. All right, we're back. We're just unplugged. We were unplugged there. Okay, now we need to unplug that cord. And in fact, we're just going to let this thing go dead because, well, we can try and plug it into the golf cart again to the inverter. We need this still. Right? We do need that. That has to go with us. All right. Jen, I'm going to leave everything else here. And we will come back. All right, let's try and walk without tripping over stuff. I'm going to get in and scoot through. Mm -hmm. Watch the cord here. How am I? Oh, just drop it. Your shoes Whoops. are untied. Yeah, you know. i got to make things difficult. <laughs> you know me, Mike. Nothing's easy. And if it's easy, it ain't free. All right, we'll try this out again. We're going to give her a second shot now. As Jen, would you mind handed me that water. Appreciate it. Huh? We are live right now. 